Hello again, boys and girls. Mr. Baxter's Learning Channel is your place to be. On this Thursday, May the 14th, it is your place to be. Welcome. We are going to talk about a little bit of reading today. That's why I've got my friend Rickety Tickety hanging out with us. Back over my shoulder, we've got the new gathering song. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at where we're going, how we're going to get there, then we'll gather up and we'll talk about our reading activity for today. Happy to see you guys. Still repping the Golden Isles Elementary Kindergarten shirt because this is our last week of academics. All right. Next week is all about having some fun. Let's see if we can get this to focus a little bit. Not looking like it's going to want to, so what I'll do... Hey, hey, hey! All you got to do, it's like, it's motivated, okay? All you got to do is tell it that it can't, and it will. Where are we going today, boys and girls? Well, as you know, we've been looking at non-fiction books. Those teaching books, books that tell us something. So if they're teaching, by golly... I can learn from my nonfiction books. Now remember, we've got to be paying close attention to our books, right? We need to make sure that we understand asking those three questions about our books always. So how we're going to show what we know or how do we get there is I will find the main idea of my book. Does that make you scratch your head and think, hmm, main idea? Well, we need to know the main idea, which is what the book is about, okay? You may get confused by some of the pictures or get fooled by the cover of a book, but we have to read through it, paying close attention so that we can find out the main idea. And the main idea is what the book is mainly about, okay? The main idea or the same theme that runs through the entire book, all right? So glad we're here today, guys. We're about to get together. See it right over my shoulder? Look, there it is. Man. Let's gather ourselves up, okay? Zoomy zoom. In on the roomy room. All right. Here we are. Move the shoulder out of the way. Let the ukulele say hey. Good morning, boys and girls. Let's go. One, a two, a one, two, three. Starting right here. Ha ha. Yeah. We are gathering. We are gathering on our phones. We have time to read. Let's go through a really quick uh, rundown of our anchor charts. Remind ourselves that we are reading nonfiction books. So, there's our gathering song. I'm going to get us going. I hope you're ready to come along with. Here we go, guys. We are gathering. We are gathering on our phones, on our screens. Everyone is... Here now, finding our own space now. We are here, we are here. Boys and girls, remember we are reading. So we are asking three questions. Does the book look right? The page we're looking at, does it look right? Does it look right? Does it sound right? You know, so are we using our ears, our sound powers? And does it make sense? Are we understanding what the book is about? These nonfiction books make us think, wow, whoa, so many cool facts happening in these books that it makes you go, wow. And then when you're thinking, wow, you're going to, oh, goodness gracious, I'm sorry, makes you ask some questions. Like, what? Huh? Why? Woo, wow, what's it talking about? Ah, but we also know we use the fancy topic words. It's important to pay att attention to your fancy topic words, guys. That's going to give you a hint as to what the book is actually about. Pictures might fool you. Topic words tell you exactly what we're talking about. So, if we really need to pay attention to what the book is, is talking about, then by golly, we need to use our avid reader power of really pay attention to the book. We can't just look at the cover and say, oh, there's a, there's a, a cool puppy on this. There's a really cool puppy on this book, so I'm going to read it because it's going to be all about, all about dogs. And we just flip through the pages. And we're not really paying attention to what the words are saying. That's not reading. All right? That is not. That is flipping through. 
it is a fun thing to do. But if you want to be learning from your books and you really want to be an avid reader, you got to pay attention to the pictures and the words on each page. Since we're paying attention to the pictures, and then we're going to talk about what the main idea is. We will be combining, making it extra strong, our picture power, and then talking about the book talk power, saying what the main idea of the book is. So that's where we're going, and we know how to get there. Let's end this guy, and then I'll show you kind of what your seesaw activity is going to look like today. Quick look, but I will not give it away. All right, so I'm going to shut that down, and then we're going to read a book together. I'm going to shut that so that I can open it in just a second. But we, right now, are going to read a book together. Remember, we're looking for the main idea, guys, right? So, the other stuff I'm talking about is look at Fishy Tales. We know this book. We know this book inside and out. We've read through it multiple times. If you just picked this book up, though, and you saw the title, Fishy Tales, and then you saw a fish, a little clownfish, swimming out of his anemone, right? You would think, oh, this book's going to be, it's, it's going to be Finding Nemo. I know this. This is Finding Nemo. It's all about clownfish. So then you get to, what, what, where did the clownfish go? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where did even the fish go? Now, we know that the main idea of this story is actually, pardon me. That was these. The main idea of that was I had to sneeze and it was loud. Back to the lesson at hand, all right? Fishy Tales is not all about clownfish. The main idea of this book is not just fishy tales about clownfish. It's all about the main idea of this book right here is ocean life. Animals that live in the ocean, not just fish. There are jellyfish in here. There are sea turtles in here. There are sharks and there are dolphins. So the main idea of our book, Fishy Tales, is ocean life. Animals in there. Don't get confused by just this um, cover. A cover is a great thing to draw your attention into a book, but the meat, the real stuff, is inside. So make sure you flip through taking that picture walk, finding those words that you know, and finding words that you might need to solve with the picture to see if the pictures are going to be about something that you are interested in or you want to learn. All right, so we discussed this main idea, but you see my man back there, Riggity Tickety is holding on to our book today. Now, just like Fishy Tales could do, this book could fool you, right? See that awesome magnifying glass zoomed in on a uh, dragonfly? We were reading books about insects and about how they're kind of the same or or what they have in common, or and we were learning fancy topic words about them, and, and, and just all kinds of stuff. So, um, I worry that you could get confused, guys, that this book right here is all about dragonflies, right? We see, it all, we see it on the cover, right? And it could be easy to think, well, I see a picture on the cover, but if we look at our words, it says, I use science tools. Wow. So now I see a hand. I see a bug, but it's magnified. So maybe they're talking about the tool that's on here. Maybe they're talking about the magnifying glass. One way to find out, right? Let's read and see if we can learn from this nonfiction book and establish what is the main idea. What is this book all about? All right, we ready? I can use, oh, I'm sorry. I use science tools. I, snap word, science, very incredible vocabulary word, and tools. So it's going to be about the tools we use for science. I use science tools. Are you ready to use science tools in the science lab? Wow, look at that awesome picture. So already in the very first picture, I noticed this is not a book about dragonflies. Not at all. I've seen a magnifying glass and now I see some different look, things that look like you would be using in a science lab. So some tools. So this is not a book about dragonflies. As you 
clerk use a pencil. <gasps> Who knew a pencil was a science tool? Use a pencil to write down what you learn. Oh, a pencil is a science tool. Huh? Wow. I'm learning, paying attention to my nonfiction book. Oh, boy, oh boy, we've got a bold word. Think that's important? Bingo. A hand lens makes small things look bigger, like this. So they're calling our magnifying glass a hand lens. Another vocabulary word, another fancy topic word, but that's okay. We're paying attention, making the pictures and the words match. If it is very tiny, use a microscope to look at it. Wow. What do you think they're zooming in on to see in that under that microscope? A camera takes pictures of what you see. Who knew a science tool was a camera? Use a ruler to measure how long something is. Wait a minute, we've used rulers in math before. I didn't know a ruler was a science tool. Are you thinking, wow? Or, huh? Well, yes, you want to measure how long something is. If you're um, studying insects or something like that, you might want to measure the length of the dragonfly. And you can use, do that using a ruler. A scale shows how much something weighs. Wow, we remember that from our math also. How much something weighs is how heavy something is. And this scale, you put your thing in here and then the little ticker goes around to a number to show you how much whatever the object you put in here weighs. So a scale is another science tool. Sweet. Measure liquid in a beaker. Oh man, that's what those science tools were. It's not just a regular jar, it's a beaker. Zoom in really close and pay attention to the picture. Do you see how there's numbers and lines on the side of that jar? That's how you measure. You know whichever number the liquid comes up to, that's how much liquid is in the beaker. Sweet, so a beaker is another science tool. <gasps> timers, boy do we know about timers. A timer counts down time. So if you're doing an experiment and you need to have something for a certain amount of time, you would use a timer to keep track. A timer is a science tool. Science tools make the work easier. So look, show what you know. Well, that's how we get there. We'll do that on our seesaw activity, okay? But I wanted to show you an important page, boys and girls. I wanna kick back and I wanna show you an important page in our nonfiction books. If you're ever confused about what the main idea of your nonfiction book would be, take a gander at the glossary page because you're going to get a, a quick walk back through the book to notice. Do you see any, like, if this book was all about bugs, like the cover picture made us think, there'd be lots of pictures of bugs here. We see a lot of bugs, but in each picture we see a different science tool that was discussed in our book, I Use Science Tools. So, if I was to ask you, what is the main idea of I Use Science Tools? Is it bugs? Is it science? I mean, there's so many different things of science. Not, it was not space science or geology or, so is it Mr. Baxter? Remember, on each page, the words and the pictures were showing us a different science tool. So that's the main idea of our book, is all about science tools, not bugs. Fishy tales, all about clownfish? Uh-uh, these books, the cover can fool you, but the knowledge is inside. Make sure you're reading and paying close attention so that you are learning from your nonfiction books. Now, I gave you a little break on Seesaw today, okay? Because we know that there are a couple different ways that we can read books. Guys, we can read the words. We can read the pictures. We can retell a story that we already know, you know? Those are just different strategies that you guys as avid super readers rocking your way through kindergarten know. 
So today, I'm going to give you a sheet on Seesaw, and I want you to read a row of pictures. Now down at the bottom, there's going to be four labels, and I would like for you to label each row with the word that matches the pictures or best tells what the main idea of those pictures are. Come on, let's take a look together at what I'm talking about. Let's open up our seesaw activity. Happy Thursday, guys. Again, May 20th. May 20th. I keep saying May 20th because it's 2020. May the 14th, 2020, 2020, here in the Digital Beehive. And here is what your seesaw activity will look like to day. Zoom on down. All right, so look, guys. Like I said, you will have a worksheet, and you will have, here are your labels. Look, up here I see a dog, a mouse, a cat, and a uh, like a hamster maybe, or a guinea pig. Now, let's see if there is a word down here that matches the main idea of these pictures. Are there? Is it pets? Food, weather, or clothes? Which one of these words describes the main idea of these pictures? You're right. It is pets. Boys and girls, the last three are up to you. Because today, we were learning from our nonfiction books, and we were finding the main idea of my book. Remember, our main idea was about science tools, and that's why if you take a close look, the main idea of these, this first row of pictures is pets. Good luck with the last three. I cannot wait to see your awesome brains hard at work with that seesaw activity. So, for reading again today, May the 14th, or 10-4, 2020, learning the main idea from our nonfiction book, Guess what? This is our last reading activity. <laughs> Baxter, I love you guys so much. You have proven to me that anything is possible. You guys are some of the best readers that I've ever seen, and I hope that you continue to grow and show what you know. Baxter, out. Awkwardly staying here.